population and public. Thank you, Lena. In the School of Population and Public Health, and in the Occupational and Environmental uh, Health Division, and I'm a certified industrial hygienist um, to boot. Um, I want to also start uh, this session um, by um, acknowledging that uh, we teach here and live and recreate on the lands of the Musqueam people, the traditional ancestral and unceded territories of the Musqueam here at Point Grey Campus at, at the University of British Columbia. And I, I welcome you um, to uh, take a moment now to uh, think about where you live and, and the history of those lands. And you're welcome if you'd like to put that in the uh, chat. Okay. First things first, we have a, a bit of news. Um, I'm gonna, we're going to continue with the rest of the info session, but I know that we had uh, in, um, uh, given a launch date of later this month. There's been a few technical issues. Um, unfortunately, because we're so close to Christmas, we weren't able to um, postpone um, and keep the start date this year. So we have moved the start date back uh, to February the 17th. Uh, I know that may be of an inconvenience to some of you, and I do apologize sincerely. Um, but maybe for others, the, these dates work a little better. So the, the course launch date now is February the 17th, um, the middle of February, and the course will run to um, uh, April the 18th. So I do apologize about that again, um, uh, but I uh, hope it doesn't inconvenience you too much. So I'm going to speak for about probably 10 or 15 minutes. Uh, I'll try and keep my, my part as short as possible so you can ask questions. Um, feel free to put them in the chat. And uh, Lena, if anything, um, if you want to uh, keep an eye on that, and uh, sorry, I should introduce Lena um, is our uh, um, program director here, or, sorry, program administrator for our master's course, and is also uh, the um, senior administrator for the continuing ed course. Uh, so Lena, if you do um, uh, want to keep an eye on the chat and feel free to interrupt me if there's something that I can clarify right away or, or clear up. So why this course? So this is actually UBC or the um, Occupational Environmental Health Group's first foray into continuing education. Um, and we felt that this um, course was needed primarily to fill what was an obvious gap. When we spoke to our uh, industrial co uh, colleagues, our stakeholders um, in occupational health and safety, there was a clear need for a high quality um, continuing a course in occupational hygiene. So that's very much the focus of this course. Um, and as on top of that, it wasn't the only gap that was identified. Um, gaps in education around things like leadership in occupational health, uh, psychological health and safety, emerging hazards such as nanomaterials. There were a number of things that we identified uh, were worthy of uh, focusing our sort of continuing ed uh, efforts. So we will in fact be rolling out additional courses starting in 2025. This first course is seen as a sort of foundational course. If you do not have a background in occupational health or occupational hygiene and want to go on to those courses. So that's um, uh, the sort of why. Um, and it also introduces the who, like who is this course for? So we thought primarily of two groups uh, that we have targeted this course for. One is for people who have some background in occupational health and safety, but do not have the hygiene competencies uh, or all of the hygiene competencies that they would like. Um, the, so for those, you could think of this course as being a, a sort of upskilling. So you already have some background and you want to upskill. Um, the other target group for this course is very much people who are coming in. Uh, they're already leaders in uh, a field such as um, uh, production or, or human resources or risk management, but are lacking the occupational health um, competencies. So those we sort of termed as people who are reskilling um, and coming in, um, if you like, from the side, as opposed to coming up into this. So uh, it's a broad course and we've purposely um, uh, focused the material so that it can serve both um, of these target audiences. 
Okay. So here are the uh, course objectives that this eight week course will cover. Um, so understanding of occupational hygiene principles. This is very much the way we teach our master's course, um, a solid foundation uh, in the principles of hygiene so that you can go on a, go and apply it to novel um, problems. Our field is full of novel problems that we've never seen before. So it's important that we teach the principles as well so that you can apply them in new situations. Uh, recognizing the roles of the team. So it's almost impossible to do occupational hygiene by yourself. You have to recognize how to use um, competencies that other experts have, whether that's ergonomists, engineers, clinicians, and so forth. Performing hazard assessments and designing risk assessments. So knowing how to uh, understand what are the hazards in a workplace and to rank and prioritize those hazards and then how to undertake a risk assessment or actually measure exposure and do exposure assessments um, is a very key part of this course. Uh, developing effective exposure control plans. So this means not just knowing what the control hierarchy looks like, but how to implement it in a feasible and rational way. And then um, thinking about occupational health uh, systems management through um, improved communications, ethics, and program management. So those are the overall objectives for the course. As I mentioned, the course is eight weeks long, and there are seven primary topics, and you can see these map quite well to what I just talked about in the objectives. Uh, so introduction, anticipation and recognition of disease and hazards, uh, going on to evaluation and measurement, um, sort of what people think of as the core of occupational hygiene, the, the pump and the, um, the sampling head. So we cover that quite uh, in a lot of detail over a three week period, not only how to use the equipment, but how to set up a proper evaluation strategy and how to analyze the data um, most effectively. As I say, we talk a lot about the controls hierarchy, but really focusing in on, on how to use it um, uh, properly um, and, and not do um, what many people do, which is a, 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 a sudden rush to uh, PPE and um, respirators and hearing protection. Uh, and then, um, as I mentioned, a, a, a module on um, occupational hygiene uh, and systems management. So in terms of the, uh, the um, learning tool that we use, we use a, uh, something which is the standard here at UBC for online courses called Canvas. Uh, it's a very user-friendly system. Um, and so when you register for the course and the course begins, you'll be given an account um, and you'll be able to access Canvas at any time. And the bulk of this course is online. Five out of every six hours we a week, um, uh, and the six hours a week is total time, not just uh, lecture time or, or, um, or uh, assessment time, but we estimate the uh, effort required by the students is around six hours a week. So five of those six hours will be essentially spent online and on your own schedule. Um, and you'll be using this uh, tool, and we've just picked out a few screenshots. Uh, oh, sorry, um, uh, I'll come to the screenshots in just a minute. The course structure um, will, uh, each week, which is roughly a module, will have a case study. So we'll introduce a case study at the start of that week's material. Then you have access to work on your own using the text, um, videos, graphics. Uh, there's some audio content, podcasts, uh, and other materials. Uh, that, then there'll be a one-week online session with an instructor uh, where we will go through um, uh, some of the, the material again. Uh, you'll be invited to contribute um, your, um, what we sometimes refer to as muddiest points, like what areas did you not really understand well? And we'll pick up on some of those to go over in more detail. We'll also look at the case study and the um, assessments that have been um, done by you during the week. So your feedback, you'll be asked to uh, provide um, answers to questions and comment and reflect on 
on questions we pose, and we'll go through those in the in the case study. Uh, sorry, in the uh, in the uh, weekly session. So I just mentioned their assignments. So during the week, you'll be asked to uh, answer questions through a, a through, through Canvas. Those will be graded. Um, and so there is, we'll, we'll come to that uh, in a few slides, talk about that in detail. Uh, and also there are additional resources. So for those of you that um, want to pursue any particular aspect of that week's material in more detail, um, there will be plenty of access to additional resources, which we think is appropriate uh, to follow on from what you've covered that week. So yeah, just to look at look and feel, um, the um, the canvas it, um, is laid out so you basically read or uh, read a page or do the activities on a page. These icons tell you what is expected, so it's very straightforward. You read this page, watch this video, listen to a podcast, etc. There are some other thing other icons we use to pull out important concepts, examples um notes and so on so um uh, it's very easy to follow along and when you complete a page you just hit enter at the bottom and you move on to the next page uh, which will give you another activity for that week it's an example of the text uh page um so um the pages are relatively short to read um they you know graphic um uh, illustrations for, for certain points. Uh, this is an example of a annotated slide. So again, it's all very, I think, visually easy to access. It's going to be made to uh, work on, or has been made to work on um, multiple platforms, phones, iPads, computers, and so on. Um, this is uh, some information for one of the case studies we're looking at. Uh, course assessment. So, um, as I say, just participating, coming to the weekly online sessions, you get a grade, ten percent. Um, and then during the week, so each weekly topic is broken down into four or five major sections. And at the end of each section, you'll be given a brief assignment, which might be a question or ask to reflect on what you've just learned, with reference to the case study, for instance. Um, and you will write those into the discussion platform of Canvas, and that gets you up to 40% um, grade for participating um, in those uh, reflections and answers. And then uh, there'll be one question which is aligned with the case study, which will bring together everything you've learned during that week and ask you with respect to the case study that we're, we're looking at um, to, to um, uh, answer that question. And that is worth 50% uh, of your grade. Um, so the final um, uh, grades will be, oh, sorry, the uh, final assessment. So to pass the course, there is a, pa a pass fail on this at 75% um, to pass the course. And um, at the end of it, um, the end of the course, uh, we award um, a complete or an achievement um, badge, a digital badge um, for the um, for those that uh, pass the course. So. I will stop there. I think I'm just about bang on time, Lena, and uh, invite Q and A. And you're welcome to speak up or put them in the in the chat. Um, whatever uh, works for you. A couple of things in the chat. Um, okay. So, uh, so that this. Um, so obviously, so what we did is we we very much, I mean, I've taught through um, much of this program we have here. We have a two year master's program here uh, in the in the division, a master's in occupational hygiene. This is very much a condensation of sort of the key parts of um, of the key courses, the hygiene central hygiene courses. Would it give you everything you need to go out and do the assess uh, noise assessment, indoor air quality assessments? Um, it certainly will give you a good foundation. Um, I think if you took what you learn here and the resources and you had a mentor to help, because um, there's going to be no practical as uh, side to this course, unfortunately, other than possibly demonstrations, 
um, you would have um, a very good starting point. Yes. Um, the uh, design of exposure assessment studies is complex. Um, and so we teach uh, it over a full term here. Um, and and so I, I would hesitate to say or be loath to say that you have everything you need after after this course, but it would be a very good starting point. Yeah, it's just sorry, I'm reading through your very, very long uh, question, but I just got to the end. So you have five years of experience already. I think that will definitely also help you. Um, uh, without going into a, a lecture now, I'm sure no one wants a lecture. Um, you know, it's so much of any kind of problem solving is asking the right question. And I guess that if you probably will have a lot of experience in knowing how to ask the right question, because when you've asked the wrong question, you end up with the wrong data and the wrong answer, and you realize you've got no further ahead. So asking the right question is where we always start with problem solving here. And I think you would have a sort of step up there. Um, and then the next step is basically setting up what we call the sampling parameters. How many samples? Who do I sample? When do I sample? That's all covered in this course. Um, then the next step is how am I going to sample? What method do I use? What is the uh, most effective and cost effective method? And we cover that in the course, but that's where hands on experience is sort of irreplaceable. Yeah, so thanks, Jeff. Um, so there are two, there will be two instructors for this course. There'll be the primary instructor who will um, be. Um, the weekly uh, online um, uh, leader. And then there'll be a second person who is also an occupational hygienist um, who will be available um, as, a, um, as a resource throughout the week. Um, and certainly, yes, um, we would certainly be happy if there was anyone struggling with any content um, to, uh, to help, um, help you get through that. Um, and also the dis the um, assignments, the discussion will also be shared. Um, and so there'll be opportunity to learn from each other as well and see how other people have approached problems. And uh, and you'll be asked, or, or we'll probably during the weekly sessions, think about how, uh, you know, we see these different responses. Is one right? Is one wrong? Are they both right? And if they're both right, how can we draw the best out of both? Or what was one better than the other? And so on. Um, so I, I think it's those weekly sessions will be great for covering the these um, uh, where people are struggling with any particular concept as well. Feel free to ask away anything you like. If I can't answer it, I'm sure Lena can. I, I mean, I'll ask you, has anybody seen anything that they or had maybe think that there's something missing from this course, something they had hoped um, to see? Um, we're certainly, uh, these are very early days for us, as I say, so we're happy to hear um, input as well. Um, Amy asked, how many students do you anticipate in the course? So um, we are anticipating we're expecting anywhere between 20 to 40 students. Um, I think we are, uh, we are the way that we've designed this, that would be the optimal size uh, for this course. And um, it will be run eventually multiple times um, uh, during the year, but that depends on the, uh, uh, the need uh, we, we feel coming from um, potential registrants. Does this course discuss ventilation assessments and ventilation plan development? Uh, Nathan, it probably won't get into that much detail. It will certainly talk about the need uh, for diff different kinds of ventilation. 
it will talk about um, the um, strengths and limitations of different kinds of ventilation, so local versus general uh, ventilation, uh, HVAC systems. Um, but given that we're only talking about six hours of material a week, it's very difficult to get into that level of detail. Um, however, that is exactly the kind of resource that we would link you to um, as at the as part of that week, uh, that um, that module. That's exactly the kind of information we will provide. Is is where to go next? Uh, Alexandra asked, "What happens if someone does not pass the course? Is there a pop opportunity?" So there is no um, there is no there is no exam per se. The way that we've tried to balance those numbers, that the percentages, is um, so that um, you know if you miss any one part, you've got sort of two parts where you can uh, make up. Um, we're very much, you know, and this goes for all our instructors here, is at graduate level or or uh, continuing ed level, is we're really interested in everyone learning the material. That's why we do this. Um, and so um, that's the most important thing. The exams are just a way to help, or sorry, the, the assignments in this course particularly are just very much a way of um, making sure people are keeping up and um, and that they're understanding the information that we, we give. So I'm sure if someone was struggling and especially if they can let us know um, during the course, then we would um we'd be able to work with them um to help them get through the material and pass the course i think very much uh we would want you to pass this course so will there be group assignments or or is it all individual work um this uh, um this is one thing that we um uh will probably try both uh but it will be small groups um and it will probably be um groups that um, as I say, you'll all be asked to provide individual set, um, uh, answers to the assessments and then possibly go into small groups to discuss amongst yourselves different answers that people have given. So there'll be both. But there won't be any um, sort of group projects that you work on for multiple weeks. There won't be any term papers. Um, this is all intended to be quite fluid so that what you know that for the next week you have this five hours of work to complete. Some of those hours will be spent, you know, reading um, material online. Uh, some will be watching videos and you can sort of time this with your commutes, um, with uh, your gym workout or whatever you wherever you listen to podcasts and so on. Uh, walking the dog, which is what I do, um, or um, thinking about the answers to these assessments. But all of that is supposed to be quite fluid. You fit it in where you can. The session, the weekly session, we the, the date and time we've picked, and this would be something we'd be interested in your feedback on, is Wednesdays at 6 p.m. Um, and we know from our extended learning department at that time, um, and day works really well for other courses. Um, most people don't want to be sort of Monday, Friday. They don't want it during the day, certainly. So uh, that is the one time there everyone will come together. Oh, okay, very good question from Jeff. Are there any recommended texts or materials to review in advance to promote a global overview? Um, we haven't got any text for this course. The material is all self-contained. As I say, there will be additional resources um, that will be available for each week. Uh, I'll be honest with you, Jeff. There, I, we struggle in occupational hygiene. Any of you that have any background here will, may know this. To, there are no great textbooks for occupational hygiene. Um, and so, and the ones that do exist are quite expensive. So we have chosen not to assign any text, but certainly the resources um, that we post will be aimed at um, uh, filling in gaps, um, extending learning uh, in key areas.
Lena, is there anything else that you'd like to know from um, our assembled group? Any questions you might have? Really? Um, how about we just ask a question to everyone? I, I know I'm what um, Lena will say. I'm glad, I'm glad that no one said no. <laughs> we're, we're, we're thrilled about that. If for those of you that said maybe, uh, you might not want to share today, but do feel free to reach out to Lena. I think you have her contact information, or you can contact us through the website um, to let us know what the factors are which are making you unsure. Um, and so, well, if there's something that we have control over, do feel free, you know, whether whatever it is, timing, um, cost, um, you know, we're, we'd love to learn from you as well as to how we can improve this. So do feel free to reach out. All right, last call for any additional questions. Is there an opportunity to trial or test evaluation tools, devices? Uh, <laughs> so good question. So Jeff said, is there any chance that we can um, actually do a practical side of this? So it wouldn't be part of this course. I think it would be probably unfair um, to sort of offer it because this course is potentially, uh, I know a lot of people will be here in, in British Columbia, but many people will be outside of British Columbia. But um, Jeff, you should uh, any on anyone if if you are um, uh, interested in um, you know learning a little bit more about the measurement side of this and, and a demo, we'd be happy to set up something. Again, we're a university; we're supposed to be here to to teach. Um, we'd be happy to set up a a session um, and uh, and and, our, and invite people to come to that. Uh, it wouldn't be formally part of this course, but definitely it's something which I know there's a bunch of us here who'd be more than happy to do. Uh, we have a, a wonderful, we have a teaching lab here. We have a lot of equipment um, and we could certainly put together a, a hands-on hands session. Be delighted to try and help organize that. Okay. Well, thank you all very, very much for taking the time to learn more about this course. Uh, again, we apologize for the, the shift in the schedule. Um, I, I, um, I hope that it does not inconvenience you if you were um, counting on taking it this year. Um, we'll start shortly after Christmas, mid-February, and I, I look forward to seeing you, some of you in, uh, in the course. Um, so take care, everyone, and... Um, and as I say, please send any questions or concerns uh, to, to us via the website or directly to Lena if you have her contact info.